this uh, session let's have uh, a quick understanding of uh, private equity just like uh, we had uh, a decent level of uh, understanding in our uh, earlier sessions on uh, hedge funds in this session let's be let's focus uh, a bit more on private equities what are the different uh, types of private equity investments that are available the private equity investments could be in the form of leveraged buyouts what is that see typically private equity fund also is more like a pooled money any private equity investment it is invested in purchasing a firm or a business unit so there is a majority stake that is going into it a, a complete firm is purchased using the fund or a major business unit is purchased but the significant aspect here is the entire purchase is done using heavy debt that is why we call it as leveraged leveraged because there is a lot of amount of debt is involved in it and the buyout by borrowing heavily is what is being termed as leveraged buyout and what typically happens is after the company is bought out it's almost becoming a private company with the majority of the stake by this pe firm so the cash flows of that company the re regular operations of that uh, target bought out company the operations of that would be generating uh, profits and that profits and cash flows would be used to pay off the debt or they would even uh, don't mind sell off the parts of the business selling off uh, some part of the business to raise the cash to pay off the debt so that is what is the typical uh, process that uh, happens in case of uh, leveraged uh, buyout initially you buy out a firm using uh, heavy leverage after that uh, take control of its operations and uh, towards the end either sell off uh, a part of it or let the operations uh, pay for it so the debt is repaid through this kind of a mechanism then the second category where a private equity investment will come into picture is in terms of growth capital this is a very simple regular kind of an investment you are taking you are you are investing in equity investments of established firms so there your stake is more or less minority so here the intention is whichever those uh, companies which have already established they need additional capital for growth or restructuring or expansions or acquisitions those kind of specific uh, for, for those kind of specific purposes you invest in those established companies but this uh, here the stake is primarily on a minority stake whereas in case of leveraged buyouts you can very well think that the company is having a majority stake so here the control does not change in case of growth capital at all then we are also talking about a third form where the private equity capital would be utilized is the mezzanine capital which is they don't take the equity stake there that money is used to provide some kind of subordinated debt or preference stock to a firm so they invest in firm in some other uh, companies not as an equity investor but uh, as a lender so they are other alternate forms of uh, the uh, loan to a firm 
apart from banks even these pe fund the pe firms also they give loans uh, to the firms uh, so they because uh, they they always uh, issue a slightly uh, risky kind of uh, debts we are classifying them as subordinate where banks where a firm cannot raise a traditional loan through a bank they approach the pe firms uh, for the loan so the kind of capital which they offer uh, which is uh, for which they charge a slightly uh, higher rate of interest even for the loans which they offer uh, that's the reason we classify it as a subordinated debt because they don't do a full fledged risk management when they are issuing these kind of uh, when they are investing this kind of capital so the subordinated debt or they could even uh, enter in as a preferred stock in a firm and most of the time there is a possibility that the warrants are associated with it so whenever they are giving a loan also there is a warrant attached to it warrant is something uh, which allows them to convert into equity shares of that firm at a later point for a fixed price today itself so if at all that particular uh, firm has uh, you know, done well and uh, then these uh, people can uh, convert uh, into equities whatever the worth of the capital they have whatever the worth of the loan they have provided it can be converted into equities then the fourth mode where the private equity funds are invested is the venture capital the major difference uh, being uh, between a leverage buyout and a venture capital being leverage buyouts and growth capitals are more associated with uh, slightly performing firms established businesses whereas when we talk about a venture capital the fund is invested completely in startups and less mature private companies and uh, so the the, the 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 investment of the private equity fund is more or less used for initial launching of that uh, new business or it could be uh, used for uh, expansion of the business or any of these things now when we talk about a private equity fund what is the key structure associated with it for every fund there is a holding company called private equity firm the private equity firm acts as a holding company for many private equity funds and each pe fund is run by a gp or what is called as a general partner he so the private equity firm typically acts as general partners they are the ones who invest the capital and probably they have their own capital that is uh, invested or they can pool the capital from other investors and invest in any of those four avenues that we have discussed so the the people who just invest without doing any kind of management of that capital are called as limited partners whereas the people uh, who along with the investment of the money also participate uh, in in uh, uh, looking at avenues where that money can be where that fund can be invested they are called as general partners or gps so the fee structure again is more or less similar to a uh, hedge fund there is uh, an annual management fee which is comprising around 1 to 3% of the total assets under management then there is a performance kind of a fee the performance kind of a fee here is what is called as a carried interest because general partner is also a person who has invested in it the carried interest uh, in this case is nothing but let's say the profits have been generated in a particular uh, year which is nothing but the fund value has uh, gone, gone up from uh, uh, x to x plus 3 which means there is uh, 
uh, uh, three units uh, additional profit that has been generated and uh, for that for that profit that has been generated during the period the G gp will get around 20% of it and the remaining 80% is again distributed back to the LPs itself based on the proportion of their investments. That is the typical uh, fee structure in case of a PE fund. And uh, at any point in time, there is an agreement uh, between uh, the GPs and LPs as to how the LP would be uh, con uh, contributing the funds at various stages and uh, the GP would be uh, investing the same. And every PE fund there is an exit strategy typically planned for three to seven years after the first investment so the exit can happen either uh, by taking the firm to an ipo or selling it uh, uh, selling it to another big uh, company and exiting out of that investment selling their uh, stake to some other uh, pe fund also any of these look like an exit strategy and uh, after the financial crisis what we have clearly observed is a couple of major things the debt which used to be a significant uh, portion of uh, the PE fund transactions uh, because of uh, a great financial crisis that has occurred the, the recent transactions which we have been uh, witnessing, there is not too much of usage of debt. The number of transactions have decreased, number of uh, PE based uh, investments and transactions have decreased and uh, the every investment whatever has been done, there is, there is a longer holding period. Uh, so the exits, uh, exit periods have slightly uh, stretched. So, which means they start, they also started adopting the route of low risk and lower returns. Yeah. And uh, now, apart from uh, the private equity fund, the similar concept of fund of funds can exist even in a PE also. Just like fund of funds investing in a hedge fund, the fund of funds can invest in, a, in multiple private equities also. So again, the same advantages and disadvantages associated with the fund of funds investing in hedge funds where they offer additional due diligence, though they charge again uh, another as, uh, annual management fee as well as uh, uh, their performance based fee. But because of uh, additional due diligence that they are offering, and uh, uh, the kind of uh, research they do in the selection of multiple uh, private equity funds. Some investors do prefer fund of funds kind of a route also for, ex for uh, investing in the private equities. So this is the typical uh, fund structure of a private equity fund. Now let's say suppose someone wants, uh, now suppose uh, the exit from a PE firm has to happen. So there are uh, two real scenarios when we talk about exit. One being an LP wants to sell off his stake, which is very much possible, right? I have invested for a few years and now I want my stake to be sold, sold, sold off. So, whenever uh, an LP stake needs to be sold off, along with the investment, even the future commitment, because in a typical agreement between an LP and a GP, the commitment exists not only uh, for the fund that has been invested, but also in the future, the fund that needs to be provided also. So, there is some kind of a commitment also from a LP as far as this fund is concerned. So whenever an LP's interest is being sold, it means the investment as well as the uncommitted, the unfunded commitment, whatever is there, that entire portion will be sold off. 
and every sale needs to be approved by the general partner the reason being if uh, if the number of uh, sales like this are increasing more and more then what could very well happen is the the this particular uh, uh, this particular pe fund gets classified as publicly traded partnership model because more and more sell offs happening it looks as if uh, it's a, though it's a partnership it is getting publicly traded so uh, from a tax standpoint it would be taxed like a corporation so for, because of this reason uh, the gp will take uh, his own call in terms of approving or non approving uh, the selling of the partnerships the, uh, if if large number of uh, sales like this are happening then the bp may not uh, approve the approve the transaction or uh, approve the selling interest whereas in uh, if the numbers are not that high then probably gp can very well agree to that typically who are the various participants who want to sell off their interest if at all uh, we talk about uh, the categories the the distressed not performing well like banks insurance firms when they have typically uh, when 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 they are when they are not performing well they would like to sell off their stake or sometimes even hedge funds they would like to sell off their stakes typically when things are not going well for them whereas uh, there could be a few non distressed investors also where the non distressed is they are not uh, typically uh, facing any big problem but they have changed their view of the market so they want to change their diversification strategies so uh, looking at the best fit for their business they wanted to sell off their lp stake from the private equity so these are various ways in which uh, suppose an lp firm wants to exit out of uh, uh, exit out of the pe fund LP, uh, the the lp limited partner want to exit out of a pe fund uh, he can very well look out for all these kind of options whereas uh, now when we talk about uh, selling off a portfolio of pe investments let's say i want to sell off my i want to exit out of the pe as a part of the exit strategy i am uh, i want to sell off uh, a pe investment altogether any party who would like to buy or who would like to uh, invest it needs to create a specialist investment fund for purchasing the pe interest and because uh, uh, because it is available in the secondary market probably uh, some kind of negotiations and bar bargainings uh, would typically come into picture because this is something which is more of a one on one kind of a transaction so negotiations and bargainings can very well come into picture uh, whereas uh, uh, whereas the purchase can happen through a specialist investment fund some key characteristics of uh, any pe transaction there is an equity funding which is being provided by gps and lps but what we typically see is majority part of any pe transaction contains secured debt so typically uh, it will be around 60 to 70% which means the equity funding would be around 30 to 40% and what we also see is the major investors whether it is through the lp route uh, the, the mostly through the lp route the major investors in pe transactions are any institutional investors the pension fund sovereign wealth funds insurance firms and even bank so almost uh, a large number of uh, financial uh, intermediaries they participate in the pe fund and generally in case of leverage buyout we said a target company will be chosen and the pe fund would be invested in that target company using a huge uh, leverage 
and uh, then uh, then it is made private and the operations of that company uh, are are uh, uh, should be should be geared up in such a way that uh, it would be a uh, paying off the debt within uh, no time and a proper uh, exit strategy will be planned so the while choosing the target some of the key inputs which a pe firm will typically uh, look at is a company with a good free cash flow if the company is having a good free cash flow then the debt can be paid off from the cash flows quite comfortably without creating additional burden for the pe firm so typically when a public company is being bought out through this uh, pe investment route the moment a pe firm invests in it the public firm becomes private there's a lot of restructuring that happens on that uh, firm and probably uh, that restructuring uh, if it is successful it generates profits at a very phenomenal abnormal rate so the intention is again to bring it back to public within 3 to 7 years and preferably uh, again through a new ipo process or through any other route and one interesting aspect with respect to this pe investments is the irr goal will be very very high which means uh, every investment that a pe firm does should yield a return of at least 20% so the the, the kind uh, if when they are investing in a leverage payout making a public firm private once they do it it should so happen that the returns of that particular firm on an annual basis should be at least 20% so the goal is very very high but of course uh, depending on the kind of risk they are taking if it is a venture capital kind of an investment probably they may uh, expect very high kind of a percentage whereas if it is a typical uh, uh, typical uh, growth capital kind of an investment they may not uh, expect uh, a very high return even for a mezzanine capital they may not uh, uh, they may not look out for a very abnormal return but in case of leverage buyouts or even venture capital the expectations in terms of irrs from them will be phenomenally higher so that's the reason there is a performance based pe associated in a pe fund a gp is compensated with the carried uh, some portion of the profits which is what we are calling as carried interest in order to uh, manage the investments in a very effective manner and what we see in any kind of a typical uh, pe firm is the motive the management is uh, very highly motivated and charged up the cash flows are really very strong and uh, the 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 quality of the assets is uh, phenomenal for these kind of uh, firms who are the key people who participate we have been looking at uh, in our uh, earlier uh, slides there are various number of participants who are involved in a pe transaction starting with pe firms what is their job they are the firms that identify the targets for leverage buyouts and uh, they hire investment banks to help them in doing the valuations identifying the targets but finally they are the ones who finalize on the targets they negotiate they get the finances they do the financing they take a place on the board of the target company and they are the people who would be taking the major financial and strategic decisions along with the exit strategy then comes the next set of participants who are the investment banks who again work with pe firms very closely they help in the selection of the target they structure the entire transaction the financial aspects of it if at all they are uh, taken up uh, uh, the underwriting they can underwrite the loan part of it they are the people who may provide uh, the loan to the pe firm 
or they participate definitely in the loan syndication process if more banks are involved in part of uh, lending uh, to this uh, to this uh, particular uh, lbo then they would be one of them the investment bank which has been hired by the pe firm would be one of them either it uh, underwrites the entire loan in uh, all by itself or it participates as a part of the syndicated bank loan facility syndicated is uh, where multiple banks come together to provide the loan for this uh, pe investment and uh, these are the investment banks which uh, also plan the exit strategy and for all this kind of uh, advisory as well as uh, the underwriting which they are doing there is a heavy fee that they charge in the process and uh, when we look at uh, investors the general uh, the general form of investors in a pe fund are the limited partners and uh, the limited partners invest and uh, typically sign contracts uh, with the pe firm and uh, it may so happen that their lock up period for their capital could be as high as even 10 to 12 years so primarily they have to have a high waiting time more of a long term focus because if an investment is actually happening in uh, uh, in in uh, buying out a company or buying out a big business unit and restructuring it, it takes a lot of time it's not something that happens in quick time or even when you are doing a venture capital investment from nowhere the company has to actually uh, go to a situation uh, of uh, successful operations so there is a typical lock in period for uh, the capital that has been provided by the lps or the investors and uh, there is also a kind of an agreement uh, which talks about uh, some kind of commitments of providing the capital in the future not just the current investment so there there is a kind of a agreement to provide some kind of uh, additional capitals in the future but the whole uh, intention is at the time of exit when an exit strategy is implemented all this will get translated into cash and that is where and that is what is the returns which typically lps and gps would be getting out of this transaction and then one more key player in this pe transaction is the management of the target firm itself there is a possibility that the management of the target firm would be retained even after the pe transaction is done the reason being those are the guys who know everything about the the operations of the company so to make them work effectively towards the success of this entire transaction they are Uh, gen uh, they are generally treated uh, on a co-investor kind of a mode and they are given stock options so the stock options will create uh, environment uh, for them to typically uh, uh, improve the performance of the company drastically this will incentivize uh, incent incentivize them to make the firm successful within the next 3 to 7 years so that at the time of the exit they will get the benefit out of the stock options so they are treated in most of the cases as co-investors and are offered stock options at the time of the exit if the exit if the strategy is successful if the firm is successful the management also becomes very heavily successful but if the exit strategy does not work well which means uh, during this 3 to 7 years the company did not um, uh, do anything uh, drastic then the options are expired because uh, it's only an option to buy a share at a much lesser price at a later point and uh, the later point would be typically uh, somewhere around the exit point of the pe firm 
So if the exit strategy does not work, options are expiring and the management is fired. Apart from all these participants, you also see a PE firm engages a number of lawyers, accountants, tax experts, people from various expertises. The prime uh, reason being they all advise uh, the PE firm on a variety of PE transactions. As we have already uh, discussed, majority part in a PE transaction would be through debt and a secured debt which is generally secured majorly uh, by the assets of the firm itself and when we talk about the equity funding it is primarily from gps and lps and uh, in the debt also they go through all these kind of routes they may resolve the most uh, the 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 most uh, uh, senior kind of a debt which they follow is a collateralized bank borrowing through revolving credit facilities right most secured form of a, a loan then they may even uh, get raise capital through term loans mezzanine debts high yield bonds and they issue high yield uh, bonds in the public markets so this is in an increasing level of riskiness revolving credit facility bank borrowing is a very safest form of raising capital the interest rates are also will be much lower so that can be raised only to a certain extent uh, depending on how much of uh, assets they can secure otherwise uh, the term loans come into picture slightly more risky mezzanine debts even more risky and high yield bonds are the highest risky instruments uh, where the, the the they have to pay a very high yield on the capital that they have raised but what is again uh, observed as we have discussed earlier also over the last few years post the financial crisis the debt levels have consistently decreased in these pe transactions now the pe firms typically they involve heavily or they team up heavily with the management of the target firm the reason uh, again as we said the target firm is something which knows in and out of the operations of the company so involving or teaming up with the management of the target firm will definitely add to the success of the transaction so some of the ways in which uh, the management uh, is being uh, involved in the whole process is as we said stock options will be granted to them on the closure so option will be given today but they have uh, the option of uh, buying the shares of the company at a lesser price uh, on the on the exit strategy so which uh, gives them uh, which gives them an incentive to perform well and contribute to the success of the transaction or there is also another scenario called uh, they are also even involved through the mechanism of rollover equity which is more like a mandatory purchase of some amount of stock by the management so that they will remain committed because their capital also is involved in the process they also remain uh, committed uh, to the performance of the transaction to the performance of uh, the investment but couple of things that needs to be uh, uh, looked at by the pe firm when they are teaming up with the management of the target firm is the target firms board the actions with the board uh, of the target firm has implemented they are subjected to a fairness test because any kind of manipulations are very much possible and it is up to the target firm to typically uh, uh, to 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 typically uh, make sure that all the transactions were done in a fair manner couple of more advices is any pe firm teaming up with a controlling stakeholder whenever we say controlling shareholder it need not be 50% plus shares even with the 30% 10% 40% shares also 
the controlling uh, controlling stake could very well exist so teaming up with uh, a controlling shareholder should generally be avoided because that may cause a disadvantage to the other existing shareholders and from a target firm standpoint if a pe firm has teamed up with the target it's, it looks like the the anti takeover measure has been implemented in place right once a pe firm has invested in a target uh, someone who is eyeing on that target firm for a takeover that takeover is completely halted at this moment so uh, sometimes it is being uh, viewed uh, viewed as uh, an anti takeover defense strategy also and uh, one more thing that may come up uh, into picture is uh, uh, there could be a management buyout also involved in this process wherein even the management is involved in the transaction so but the the only thing that needs to be uh, uh, carefully looked at here is the pe firms exit strategy might be for not more than for 3 to 7 years whereas the management's investment horizon could be for a slightly longer period of time so the entire objective of the returns during this uh, period needs to be clearly uh, understood and uh, the alignment of the return goals need to be clearly discussed by both the parties and uh, as uh, we have already talked about the different forms of debt in case of a pe for company if, if we are going through a senior bank debt it is primarily through a revolving credit facility where the 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 pe firm does a collateralized borrowing from a bank by securing some of its assets once that loan is paid back again they can do a reborrowing so it's a kind of a revolving kind of a credit facility that's the most uh, safest and and it uh, does not have a higher uh, risk and high return involved in this so the interest which they may have to pay in that process is pretty minimal and the next thing is uh, they can uh, go through the term loan kind of a process the term loans uh, could be either senior or subordinated depending uh, on uh, how many senior uh, loans uh, they have already uh, raised the the new loan that they are going to raise the new term loan that they are going to raise could be either senior or subordinated in most of the time what is observed is uh, these term loans are generally associated with floating rates and then they could also resolve to the process of junior debt raise the capital in the form of junior debt junior debt is nothing but uh, they can issue high yield bonds in the capital market because uh, the ratings uh, which the firm would be receiving would be not so interesting which means uh, the, the the capital they have to raise is through the junk bonds or high yield bonds they have to pay a very uh, high interest on the capital that they have raised but every cap every capital that is raised through that route could either include warrants which means the investor can very well uh, convert into uh, equity at a later point or it could be in the form of payment in kind payment in kind is nothing but uh, there is no payment of uh, interest at regular intervals the interest is also capitalized and the principal keeps uh, increasing those are the typical payment in kind kind of clauses so the junior debt which the company can raise could even uh, uh, could even uh, be in the form of uh, high yield investments with a warrant or a pik clause being attached to it or they could even uh, raise a mezzanine debt where they are selling some subordinated uh, notes to banks institutional investors at once again uh, because this is a junior debt and they are raising uh, loans uh, uh, through this uh, mezzanine debt form uh, the returns that they have to pay the interest that they have to pay in all these things is abnormally higher so which means the pe firm has to choose right from the safest mode of raising capital through a very uh, uh, risky form of raising capital 
but of course uh, the equity form so these are uh, these all constitute this kind of this total capital constitutes close to 60 to 70 percent of any uh, investment the equity can be in the form of common equity or a preferred stock that forms the remaining part and coming to the impact of the pe transaction sometimes what happens is we, we, we talk about a word called leverage recapitalization. See, after a PE firm has invested in a target, the, the intention is the returns should start coming up for the PE firm. Now, what could happen is the target firm can raise a huge debt because the target firm is typically a firm with a good uh, cash flows and all. The target firm can raise a huge debt in order to pay the dividends to the PE firm and uh, because of that PE firm returns will uh, increase but the biggest risk that is coming up uh, is the, the, the debt of the target firm increases drastically it's put, it puts additional stress uh, on the target firm so whatever uh, the existing debt uh, the target firm has even the value of that will drastically go down so the the debt becomes more and more risky which means the equity investors can get badly affected if things don't go well probably the equity investors will lose a lot of things and even the community gets very badly affected because people uh, may there may be layoffs that may come up people may lose their jobs because of which the environment within the community also gets very badly damaged right so this is uh, what uh, that is uh, being covered as a part of this uh, session in terms of uh, the overview of a pe process we all started uh, we, we started this uh, session with uh, understanding uh, the different forms of pe investments and what the fee structure the fund structure of a pe fund and uh, what are the different uh, modes in which the pe firms uh, raise capital or uh, how is the pe fund uh, constituted uh, using debt and uh, equity who are the major participants in a pe transaction and uh, how does the secondary market exist for a pe uh, transactions and finally what is the impact of a PE transaction on a uh, on the target firm like a re leveraged recapitalization kind of stuff I hope uh, this session uh, has given you a decent level of insight into the understanding the overview of a private equity uh, fund and its operations if you have any further queries regarding this you can uh, very well give me a call on the number that uh, i have provided here or even you can drop in an email to me at vamsidhar at pacegurus.com thanks a lot for uh, listening to this uh, session thank you very much <laughs>